Today's gospel, we, or actually today's readings, that uh, today's the feast day, it's of the conversion of St. Paul. Um, and uh, it's uh, an incredible story. Um, St. Paul's conversion story, there's actually three accounts of it in Acts of the Apostles. There's the, the actual account, which we heard today, and then there's his testimony of his conversion in chapter 22 to a Jewish audience that he's converting to, to uh, Christianity. And then 26, there's a, a conversion story that he, his account of his conversion to a pagan audience. And each one's a little different to address the uh, audience that he's talking to, it's really neat. And the main ministry of St. Paul throughout his life was unity. And it started off with wanting to bring unity to the Jewish peoples. And it was a bit misguided. And um, Jesus appeared to him and straightened him out and says, the unity I want you to bring is between the Jewish Christians and the pagan Christians and bring unity between those two. And that's, that's God's plan. Uh, that's what happened in the New Testament. It's, it's the uh, God's great plan of salvation is start off small, grow it to the, country, to the people of Israel, the Jews, and then grow it from there to all people of all nations. That's the history of salvation. That's God's plan. And, and St. Paul played a key role in that. Now, St. Paul was a gifted young man uh, with intelligence and all sorts of extra gifts. Uh, he was born uh, of, uh, in a Jewish family, very strong Jewish family that he could trace his roots all the way back to Abraham. So he was a son of Abraham. Uh, and he was a Roman citizen. Incredible, uh, you know, uh, privilege and uh, extremely rare for a Jew to also be a Roman citizen. And then he was educated because of his talents by the very best uh, places that it could be educated, including in Jerusalem by the Rabbi Gamaliel, who was... Um, considered the best teacher ever of all time for uh, the, the Roman or the uh, uh, law of Moses. So he was, uh, had an incredible mix of things. And then he was also raised in Tarsus. So Tarsus is near Antioch in the northeast corner of the Mediterranean Sea. And that was a, a big pagan area. And uh, so he, was, he had studied and learned Greek and could read and write in Greek. And he also studied the Greek culture. So he was like the perfect person to be the evangelizer to um, the pagans at the, t at the time. You know? um, but as a, as a young man and uh, off as being a Pharisee, he was a very zealous Pharisee. And he, he thought that if he could unite the Jews, even persecute fallen away Jews, so to speak, even to the point of death, if he could enforce the Mosaic law, he could bring people, he could hasten the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, not realizing that the Messiah had already come. And then he, he did it to the point of, of uh, you know, persecuting people even to death. And uh, so, uh, but then he has this, uh, conversion. And it's a very dramatic conversion in a couple of ways. One, it's, you know, he's, he's going to Damascus with, with paper so he can arrest Jews that have gone to Christianity and bring them back and, uh, you know, like torture them until they decide to be Jews again. And on his way there, he sees this flash of light. He's knocked down. He hears Jesus's voice saying, why are you persecuting me? He's blind for three days. And then when Ananias lays his hands on him, he can see again and he's baptized. All in like three days, unbelievable. And then the other really amazing thing is that how fast he ch changed from being a persecutor of Christians to an evangelizer of Christians, one of the greatest evangelizers that there ever was. And so in our gospel, you probably I tried to emphasize in the, it was a command. Jesus commanded the apostles to go out and proclaim the gospel to the whole world, every nation, all peoples, you know. 
And that's exactly what St. Paul did in the 34 years between his conversion and his martyrdom. And this, the uh, idea of uh, you know, proclaiming the gospel, it's, it's something that we're all called to do. And uh, it's like a, uh, it's a thing that disciples do. It's, it's, a, it's a Christian thing to do. And we all have a conversion story. It might not be as dramatic as St. Paul's, but we all have one. And God calls each one of us to also proclaim the good news to those around us. And so uh, today, maybe we should ask God to give us the strength, give us the courage, so that we can imitate St. Paul in some fashion, like maybe his love, tremendous love that he had for uh, Christians, for the, uh, his tireless action to, to grow the faith, or you know, the, uh, his, his desire to, to share the word that he, that he had to share the gospel with others around him.